Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look now at the Technicolor system, the two color system called System 2. The first system they used was additive, which means they had two lights shining together, one red one and one green one effectively, uh, those two channels which mixed on the screen itself. The next stage they went to was to put it all into the film, so you just had to shine one light through it, so you only needed one projector. And they did this by the, the same method of recording twice, once with a red filter and once with a green filter. And this is, you know, 1922, I believe. And this was the result here. So the top negative here is the red channel and the bottom one is the green channel, just with literally recorded on black and white film with coloured bits of plastic, effectively, or glass in front of them. So they took those and made positives from those. And so you can see there, for example, in the final colour, this is red down here. And so the red channel, this is light. But in the green channel, it's dark. They then dyed them. And the key thing about the dye is the dye stuck to the blacks, the darker areas, but not to the lighter areas. And that's because the cellophane was transparent. So where you see light, it's nothing there. It is effectively transparent so that the light goes through it so the fact that there's nothing there for the dye to stick to. So how does this work from here? Well if we take the uh, cyan one there and the magenta one and this is the, the effectively the negatives the inverse of this you've got red here and so you've got cyan here. So why is this a subtractive system? So imagine you've got white light shining down here. This is a projector shining through these two. Well, that's made of red, green and blue. Well, the first thing you might notice is, is we, because it, what is white here is actually transparent, the white light will go through this area, through this area, so it comes out white at the other end, which is why the white areas work, because those are just transparent all the way through. The reverse is also true. So if I've got something which is totally black here, in this one here, it doesn't matter whether it's totally black there in, or, or other, it's just going to block the whole thing out. But effectively, this is going to remove all of the reds here, because this is the point about being a subtractive system, that it removes the opposite colour to you got here. This is why you have a negative here, which you have cyan, which is the opposite of red, because when white light goes through there, it will block the red light and only let through the green and blue light. So effectively, what you get is something like this. Imagine this is the sky here. So there's a bit of sky coming through here, not much red in the sky. So it's largely green and blue light that comes through. But now when it goes through this filter here, magenta, opposite of green, will block the green light, largely, and what comes through is going to be mostly blue. So you've let the blue of the sky come through by subtracting the red and then subtracting the green, and that's the idea of this being a subtractive system. So, for example, the, the red in here, it's very light in here, so it's going to let through a lot of that red light. So it, the red is not blocked in the red areas. So it gets through to here, and this the red in here is allowed through, but it'll, it can block the other colours, so it lets it all the way through and it comes out as red. So that's broadly how it happens. Now then, what I'm going to do is zoom in to this one here and see how we can do this in terms of with a a photo editor which is not the same as shining light through it and having sort of transparent areas as such. So if I select that, hit Control C, Control V, what I've done here is put out a, another layer on top. So I hit Control D to get rid of the marching ants. But I want to turn this upside down, this layer I've just added. So I'm going to go to Arrange, Flip, Vertical because it's a folded image effectively, and so we've now got this on top. So if I just drag this here, you can see you can move it out. It's just been flipped over like that. So now what I want to do is to combine these two. So the question is, how can I make that apparently transparent? I want the whites to be, become transparent. 
and in blend modes white are transparent in the darkened blend modes. So I just go here now to the blend mode here and go to darken and there I've got the affected picture. It's not quite the same as this here because there's, there's a little bit being lost in translation here between these. These aren't exactly as they were but the, that's the, the best you're going to get with that. So let's try it in reality and see what happens. So let's go to this one here. I'm going to create black and white images here. I'll go straight to the positives. So for this one here I can just go to the background red down here in the channels tab right click that and say create grayscale layer. So now I've got grey here. White represents that there are red pixels here. So this guy had a white shirt so there are red pixels in that. So I'll just turn that off for the moment so we can see this again. Click the bottom layer. You don't want to do this from the top layer there. So you go background green here, right click there, create grayscale layer. So now we've got that. So let's go call these red. R and G for red and green. Let's go up back up to the top one and select that. Now then we want to change the colour here to cyan and for various reasons one of the best ways to do that is with the channel mixer. And the channel mixer is very powerful but can be pretty confusing in here. Remember now we've got a black and white image here so we've actually got RGB all in this image but it represents just the red so we want to translate that to make that to be the cyan. So you could make cyan here by turning down the red but look what happens to the whites here. The whites have gone to cyan so I don't want that. I want to keep that back up again. So if I'm not going to turn up the reds I can do that perhaps with the reds and the greens and blues. So if I go to green and say turn up the reds so I'm putting green in here because when I've got the green tab up there, the thing up here then I'm only going to adjust in green. And if I go to the blue again with the reds turn this up. So both of those you know we typically turn to up to 100% and now we've got the blue but we've got the whites nice and white here as well. So that means the light effectively can go through but when we use the dark and blend mode it was effectively transparent. So I'll do the same here. So I go with the greens, I go to the channel mixer. Now then I want to I'll just turn the top layer over so you can see us getting this. So I'm going to go turn up the greens here and a red so I've got red in it. And then go to the blue and turn up the green there so I turn that into magenta. And now then if I go here, change the blend mode to darken. And there we go. This is a picture now effectively without the blue in it but with the whites being kept. Yeah, If we just took the blue channel out then everything would be, be magenta. But so we've got this effect here. It looks pretty good colour. The colours aren't quite the original. So if I just grab those together and turn those off you can see there. So this guy's yellow jacket here has become pink but that's okay because we've got a, a better colour than we had with just black and white. You can also play with it. So for example if I go to the um, the channel mixer here in the green layer, if I go down to the blue and let's just play with this a bit, if as I go down here a bit you might say oh actually I like that colour a bit better. Yeah and you can have that because if you just go to this one here so I alt click the green layer, that's the colour. In other words I, all I have done is changed the colour. That's in other words I've changed the dye that is being applied. So it's not quite exactly as it should be but it's a, if it's a more pleasing result then that's okay. So anyway there you are. That's how the Technicolor System 2 subtractive system works and how you can implement it in Affinity Photo. You can of course do other things to age this and add noise and blur it and so on but this I just want to show you the effect here. Anyway that's it and thank you very much for watching.